Hi friends and welcome to the Mindful Making video podcast. This is episode number 31. Today is the 1st of August and you have landed here in my home in Hornsby Heights, north of Sydney. My name is Jane and I'm Danish but living in Australia. This is a video podcast mostly about knitting and knitting is my mindfulness practice. So that is where I recharge, that's where I relax, that's uh, where I feel grounded. So I knit every day. And in this podcast, I share my passion for yarn and for knitting with you all. So please have your project ready um, and sit down and hopefully enjoy working on your project for half an hour together with me. It, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to know that you will be sitting knitting as I do when I watch podcasts. I really like that uh, bit of company when I'm working on a project. If you're a new viewer and just found this channel on the big uh, YouTube uh, web, welcome. I'm so happy that you found my little corner of the internet. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm thrilled that you want to spend your time with me uh, and I hope you'll enjoy. Do you have a cup of coffee and a, or tea ready? I have a half a cup of coffee. I have been recorded this introduction a few times, so hopefully this will be the one that I will go with. There's not much coffee left. You can find me as Mindful Making on Instagram. That's where um, I'm mostly active. I also am Mindful Making on Facebook. On Ravelry, I'm Mindful Making AU, and I also have a small Etsy shop of that name. Today, I'm not outside as I've been the last few episodes. It's beautiful weather outside, so I could have, have uh, taken you out as well today but i've chosen to take you to my new yarn room or yarn studio or work office because it is also <laughs> it's also where i will work and when we work from home so it is my home office and uh, i think i finished painting last weekend so as you can see it's uh, <laughs> very neutral and white and uh, we put up uh, furniture Thursday and Friday, IKEA flat packs and uh, then an elevating desk. So uh, I've just put in some yarn actually yesterday night and I thought that um, although it's not finished and fully sort of uh, decorated uh, yet, I would invite you in so you can see how far I've come and I will insert a short video later on in, in this episode so you can see a bit of the, the process as well. But let's get into the finished objects. And one of the finished objects which was actually just finished at the last episode, today I'm wearing my Koibia designed by uh, Caitlin Hunter. I have um, I have used Coast Yarn from Holstgarn. Uh, the Coast is a 50-50 or 55-45 merino wool and cotton blend. I've held two strands double. And I have used, uh, the main color is called Skylight and the um, contrast color is called Lead. And in the description box, uh, there is a link to, um, to the pattern and also description of the yarns that I've used. And I've also updated the Ravelry page so you can see the details there. Um, in terms of modifications, which I th might have talked about as well in the last episode, so uh, apologies if you've seen that already, but um, I just um, extended the uh, sleeves, well basically with one centimeter, 
it's easier to do here and you know i might actually need to extend them a bit more i haven't actually washed this i've just been wearing it um so i haven't washed it so i don't know if it will grow i don't expect it will but i will just um soak it one um just to check out the length of the sleeves before i might just add a few centimeters more because it is a bit too short um lovely lovely project really really enjoy working on this um project um and i will just insert a short video um with me standing up so you can see the fit and the body length so it comes here this jumper a lot and one of often my colleagues say you know we we meet online because every all our work is online and uh, teams zoom meetings um, every day and they are always <laughs> excited to see um, what knit I'm wearing on the day and I got a lot of um, acknowledgement and positive comments on this so it's a very clever pattern That was the um, what I'm wearing and also the first finished object. For the next finished object, I will just do a short break with a wardrobe uh, change. So, the second finished object is my second edition of the rose hip shawl i um, started i hadn't started this uh, in the last episodes but i've just picked out these earthy neutral um colorways to put together for a rose hip shawl and can i well in all modesty i really like knitting this and wearing the shawl um I should, well, yeah, and a lot of you have really um, blown me away with all the positive comments when I posted about this on in, uh, on Instagram. Uh, so it's quite different from the original, which you can see much more about in episode twenty nine. Uh, the original colors are sort of a soft pink with speckles and a mustardy yellow and a burgundy type uh, red deep red <laughs> purple color so this is very different and um, this came out beautifully it is a slightly um, thinner yarn that I've used for for this shawl uh, so I went down a needle size I've put up uh, the details on the project page and um, you can find the yarn and the link to the pattern in the description box below. But uh, if I just take it off and show you, so it starts at, at this end, moving across and then shifting into the um, speckled yarn and then into the variegated and basically out again and so, so that the rose gets longer and longer and then it has these slip stitch uh, pattern in, in between and textures so this is the coast yarn <clears throat> the color is called Ecru and I've held um, just I've just knitted with one strand of, of the yarn 
so it's very light and almost and almost see-through not see-through but it's um super lightweight and then moving into this yarn which is a um, the may yarn club from uh, louis and lola and i will talk about the yarn um in just a moment and then moving into this speckled yarn which is called barn owl and it's from circus tonic handmade so all um and then coming uh, this is then the yarn club yarn here the brown and this was then the mini associated in or yeah in that yarn package as well so i really really love this yarn so it's a combo of australian hand dyed yarn and um danish one of my favorite yarn brands so the holst yarn so i use a lot of their yarn in uh, in my knitting so talking about the the yarn, it is. <coughs> so this is what is left of a one hundred gram of circus single ply fingering, and it's called Barn Owl, and it's from Circus Tonic Handmade. Beautiful subtle coloring we are still in lockdown here in sydney we've been in lockdown since 26 of uh, june and it's the first of august today and um, well we'll probably be in lockdown for august as well Dream. so the yarn club uh, yarn from uh, louis and lola is called sunset over southern tasmania as it is a yarn club color, um, it was a one-off, but I've heard that Karina is considering um, dyeing up something similar in the future. And um, it's on the BFL nylon fingering, so 80% Bluefest Lester and 20% nylon. And this is Louis and Lola's tag. This is a 365 meters per 100 gram. And so it's a, it's a typical four ply um, sock base and 366 in 100 gram. And I think the, um, so the ecru, let's see where we have here. So this is slightly thinner this is an 500 meter per 100 gram this is the same yarn not the colors of course as i um, used for the koivia sweater you just saw so uh, this was knitted up uh, very quickly it took me 10 days i think so i'm now looking in my little book so started 4th of July and finished the 14th. I have used 58 grams of the um, Coast yarn, 64 gram of the Circus Tonic um, Barn Owl and 44 gram of the um, Louis and Lola yarn. So 802 meters in total. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit of a number nerd, so sorry about uh, that. Um, but I just really, really like to have <clears throat> this record that shows the uh, the meter that I've used. And as I said, I worked on a four millimeter needle, so that is a US six size, and that is a size um, smaller than that's called for in the pattern. But it still get um, sort of similar uh, size. I might have um, just added a few rows here and there. So if your own uh, little um, features, uh, you are your, you are the boss of your own knitting, so you can add a few rows here and there if you want to. So um, that's the second finished object.
finished object number four is a beanie for my husband. He was complaining all the time whenever I sat in the sofa saying, oh, you're not working on my beanie. So um, here it is. It's a very simple beanie with a twisted uh, rib in the brim, folded up and then just a four times decreases in in the crown i've i've um, knitted one before which was black but now he had a um, he has a dark blue jacket and he wanted a matching hat very very nice very nice i used uh, leftovers that i grabbed from stash so this is whatever is left it is a um, so this is a black hill highlands wool so it's 100 lamb's wool and this color is called midnight or midnight it's from ghana so in denmark and i yeah it is getting dark now it's yeah it is 4 40 in the afternoon and it's held together with a alpaca silk from Sandmeskan in a sort of dark blue color. So this has a bit of sheen to it, but putting together or uh, combining it with this more matte, whatever that's called, um, it takes out a bit of the sheen because he didn't want that. So uh, one more finished object. And he loves it. So um, good, good. So as I said, large and small finished objects. So the fourth finished object is even smaller. When I am on uh, work meetings and it's suitable to do a bit of knitting, I work on my dishcloths. I showed you a few last time and this is no different from what I showed you last episode black on black and it's just garter stitch um, in an eight ply cotton and it's from it's called four seasons fly uh, flinders eight ply cotton it's from spotlight um we love these cloths here in in our household so uh one more and um I have one on the needles always. So those were the finished objects. On my needles is another shawl. It is worked in, again, in a three color. So in these pretty alpaca yarn, and they are from Black Wattle Yarn, kindly sponsored by Skein Sisters. Thank you, uh, Deb and Janine. So uh, commercial, I have received uh, these, these yarns as a gift, and I am uh, working up a new design with these colors. Black Waddle, uh, Australian Alpaca Farm, this stunner of a yarn, and it's called Someday. It is, again, a bit of a secret project, so I can't show you much. I've enjoyed knitting that when I watched the Olympics. Um, as I mentioned, we are in lockdown in Sydney. So we are staying home, you know, July, poof, went by like that. And it's just because we have just stayed home. I just uh, went um, shopping the other day, well, grocery shopping. And usually I do it online. So I haven't been out of my house apart from my daily walk or semi-daily walk. Um, I haven't been out for a month. And I felt almost, no, not scared, but it was just very awkward to be out and about. <laughs> oh, so this month is just, 
yeah stay strong stay safe everyone send positive thoughts and uh, engage in the knitting community um, we are here to cheer each other on and support so please do when you see instagram posts comment and also on videos like this um, put in a comment that makes a huge difference um, and i well noticing the number of comments and the joy that they bring i for sure will write even more comments than i do already do because it truly makes a difference that brings me to the giveaway which uh, i announced uh, last episode which is in a celebration of episode number 30. but before i do that a cliffhanger i forgot the second work in progress which is my crochet blanket and just to show you the number of rows that i've managed to get done since the last episode my crochet blanket so it's a granny stripe and um, it's very simple design it's from pearl soho it's a free pattern or description and um i haven't done that much though since last time this is the um can you see that little bulb marker there so i that i entered i I added that in last time as an indication of where I was at the last when recording the last episode. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven rows, but the rows are fairly long. This marker is from the June episode. So a bit of progress. The kids cannot wait for this blanket to be finished. It's a soft, warm and large. So it's a, it's a very suitable project here for winter when the, um, when the evenings are cold, so it can warm um, my lab and legs uh, while I'm working on it. So that's, uh, that's a, progress on the crochet and now again you know I'm a bit all, all over the shop today sorry because um, I wanted just to look at um, the status of the July projects in my little knitting journal so in July 2021 I finished four objects and I knitted up 3,640 meters of yarn. That's pretty good. I am happy with that. So in total, I've made 21 finished objects in 2021. 21, 2021. Let's see what next month brings. Now we are moving into the giveaway. The prize is one of uh, my bags, uh, project bags with prints that I have from uh, my grandmother, her stamps or blocks, you might call it. And then in here there are a 100 gram of coast yarn and in the color plum so you could use these for a, um, a rose hip shawl maybe and then also to the winner they will get a pattern for uh, the rose hip shawl not this one because this is used already but uh, directly into the your Ravelry account. So um, the winner has been drawn through a random um, YouTube comment picker, 
and there were 205 comments um, and the winner is Congratulations, Aslav. Aslav. Uh, I am so happy that I will send off uh, this giveaway to Norway. Thank you so much uh, for participating and thank you all who took the time to enter a comment. And as I said, it means a lot. And I truly, truly enjoyed reading them all. What you were asked to comment on was why you knit. Many of you, basically all of you, said that knitting uh, made you relax. That was where, uh, in this sort of bit of crazy, crazy world and things moving fast around you, you could just slow down and a bit of um, meditation, sort of the rhythmic knitting one stitch at a time, feeling of yarn in running through your fingers. And a lot has, um, many of you also said that knitting has helped you getting through difficult times. So it could be illness, it could be grief. So it was just so heartwarming to see how knitting also, in not just producing a project, uh, uh, producing a finished product, also give the process of knitting is, has a healing effect. Um, so that was just good to see. And I totally share that, um, that feeling as well. A lot also comment, you know, on top of that, the joy of giving gifts, handmade gifts to loved ones and just seeing them wearing uh, those hand-knitted um, jumpers or socks or what it might be. So both this, you know, the, the, the um, enjoyment and the, the sort of the calming effect of the process and then the joy of gifting a, a handmade product to someone you love. So those were the main aspects of why you knit. So that was really, really good to read and it was heartwarming. And um, yeah, if you haven't read through the comments from last episode, I would encourage you to do so. It's really, um, you can see knitting is much more than just yarn and needles. So um, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to comment and participate in the giveaway and congratulations to Eslau. Finally, I will just mention <laughs> another finished, no, not finished, work in progress. Because last time I wore this uh, beautiful vest and I got a lot of positive comments. So thank you so much for that. And I was so brave or not brave to say that uh, the pattern would be written up in July. That didn't happen. So um, note to self, Jane, is not to, not to promise anymore and just mention it when it's finished. Uh, I'm sorry, but um, it is on my to-do list and let's see when it is done. If you want to see just a bit, if you're curious to know more about this, then go back to episode number 30. But I have a, I have a backlog of patterns that I need to ride. It's just at the end of the day, I sort of can't face to look into the screen anymore. So I just want to sit down and relax with my knitting. It's easier to knit than to write. Let me put it that way for sure. And then my yarn room. So when my oldest son Anders moved to Denmark, we we had an extra room. Um, so we did a bit of reshuffle 
so this room was then vacant that and my younger son moved he had this room before so he moved into sort of it sort of moved up in in a larger room it needed a lot of well it needed to be repainted this room we hadn't done we haven't done anything um in terms of painting rooms or renovating uh, since we moved in five years ago and um, that was quite obvious on the walls and on the carpet and also that my younger son he likes his cup of coffee and um, sometimes it just ended on the floor <laughs> but anyway so um so they they uh, moved around and the room was empty and i could get started so last weekend the walls and the ceilings were painted i will insert a short video or some um, pictures of what it looked like um, when i started and what it looks like now after repainting but before any furniture arrived and then this wednesday i think we just borrowed or hired a um, you know a carpet cleaning machines and my husband just in two hours cleaned the carpets here upstairs and it looks you know it's just like almost a new carpet so that's well worth the you know the cost of the hire and the time it only yeah and I, I you know it only took a couple of hours then it was done and then Thursday and Friday we I think Thursday afternoon my husband collected the orders, you know, I've ordered a stand-up desk and a, some shelvings from Ikea and a chair and I have a little coffee table so I can have my coffee and my computer so I can watch YouTube videos um, and then this cupboard will be my yarn storage. So it's a bit like my own little yarn shop uh, and I've, I'm not finished yet. I have more of a uh, Holzgarn Super Soft that I have on cones that I haven't uh, moved upstairs yet. So I'm still in the process of moving up. And when I um, when I touch the yarn and put it in to um, now my collection, uh, I enter it into a spreadsheet so that I have absolute control of um, what I have in my yarn collection. It's not my stash anymore. It's a collection of beautiful yarn. And as you can see here, I have now 69, over 69,000 meters. So 69 kilometers of yarn in these shelves. So let me just uh, walk you and, and a short, uh, just a walk through of um, what is on the shelves and um, show you what those 69 kilometers of yarn consist of. <laughs>
um, in this collection there are a few purchases or um, additions to the stash that I've done lately. I was supposed to go to the Sheep and Wool Show in Bendigo in 16 to 18th of July. I was, you know, Sydney was in lockdown, so I couldn't, I couldn't travel until the day or five hours before the show was to open, Victoria went into lockdown. So the stall holders there had put up their stalls with beautiful yarn, expecting uh, customers to, you know, open the doors, enter, enter the market. But they had to um, pack it all up again and uh, go home. I bought some yarn to support those uh, hand dyers and yarn um, producers. So some of it sits down here. So let me uh, take them up and show you. I bought two skeins of sock yarn. Uh, and these are from Bombed Yarns. <laughs> and the colorway is called Who Gives a Flying Flathead? 75% uh, Merino and 25% Nylon. It, uh, the colorway was, um, my, my daughter chose the colorway and she said, oh, I want something that has a lot of uh, different colors in them. So I ordered these two on her um, request. These beautiful neutral and natural colors. So these are 100% Polworth. So that's their own flock. Uh, Tandy is a, um, a wool producer with their own flock in Victoria. I got four of these. Uh, it is the color is called natural taupe, and then one of this color, which is called ash, and then uh, this neutral or oh, yeah, undyed white. So this looks like. I don't know what I will knit from this yet. It's super duper soft. I'm actually very, very fond of this ash color. I might get a few more of those. Mm. So check out Tandy and Bummed Yarns. There were a lot of, of other you know, stall holders, um, and I wanted to support them all, but can't do that. The final addition to my um, yarn collection uh, during the month of July is the last of my yarn club. So this is the July colorway from Louis and Lola. And I'm just super amazed of, of this color. It's just perfect for me. Just right up my alley. And it is a, it's on the BFL nylon fingering weight. This colorway is called Sarah Ann Rocks. And the, the, um, the inspiration for these yarn clock colors were Australian um, or Tasmanian photographers and photography. So this was here, it's called Colors of Tasmania. So it's the, um, the Tarkin Sarah Anna Rocks and it's by Cam Blake Photography. So this is the inspiration for, for this beautiful, beautiful color. This, I have to find some a special sock pattern for these yarns. Beautiful. Mm. 
Yeah. I am tempted to participate in another yarn club again because, you know, getting that monthly package and you don't know what it is, super exciting. But I will just hold off with my 69 kilometers of yarn and I'm not done yet. That brought us to the end of this podcast. Thank you for spending the time with me here. I hope you have enjoyed uh, and got a bit of knitting done. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Please um, uh, subscribe, like and share and write a comment. It's really, really helpful and it means a lot. So wishing you all well, enjoy uh, summer, if it's still summer where you are and the winter that we are still having here in Australia. Stay safe in lockdown, but around the world, you know, with the Delta variant of the coronavirus just washing its way through society. I am getting my second vaccine on our second vaccination on, on Tuesday, I think. So I'm looking very much forward to that. Um, so I think that's our only way out of, of, of these lockdowns and actually to start living side by side with a COVID virus. I think we will end up being sort of similar to the, uh, the flu vaccine that we will need boosters at a certain frequency to keep up with the um, mutations and the um, the uh, the variants of the virus so stay safe stay sane reach out to friends family who you might not have talked to for a while just send them a text give them a call go for a walk with a messenger on or video chat so it's just feeling that, you know, you walk next to each other. Send some love around in the knitting community. Reach out, comment, share. So we just support each other through this. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.